Today we're talking about static equilibrium. In statics, we are most concerned with static equilibrium. That means that all the forces acting on an object are balanced. There is no net motion, and the object is not accelerating, decelerating, or anything of that nature. The general equation shown here is the sum of all forces equals zero. This big letter here is the Greek letter sigma. It stands for sum. So that reads the sum of all forces equals zero. So for example, this sigma notation is just shorthand for this. F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus so on and so forth. And of course, these could be any variables that you want them to be. Um, that just means we add up all the pieces that are present. Perhaps one of the most useful tools when dealing with static equilibrium is the free body diagram. Um, we typically abbreviate free body diagram FBD. A free body diagram looks on all the forces acting on the object. It is important to note that we're looking at all of the external forces, not the internal forces. Let's go ahead and um, we're going to do an example. When we're doing a free body diagram, first of all, we draw the basic shape. So let's say for sake of example, I've got an engine. First of all, we're going to show all the forces acting on the engine block. And these are all the external forces. So for example, an engine block has a head that's bolted onto the engine. And there is a force that's keeping the head on the engine. But there's also a force that the engine's putting on the head. Since those both are combined, those two forces would cancel out. One's going in the negative y direction, one's going in the positive y direction. And their end result on the whole system would be zero. So we're only looking at forces that are acting on the outside of an object. What is acting on the outside of this particular engine? The easiest one probably is weight. You can't just have weight acting on an object though. If weight is the only thing acting, the object is going to go down because it's pulling down. So let's say there's two engine mounts on either side. And I'll call this the force of mount one and the force of engine mount two. Notice that all my forces have directions um, and arrowheads. Your forces must have arrowheads. You may not just have lines. You have to have a sense in the, which those forces are acting. You also have to have any angles. So let's say that there's a coolant line going in here and let's say that there's another mount over here and we can say that this mount is a diagonal mount and there would be some angle here and we'll call it theta so you'd have to record every force that was acting on this particular object I guess we need a coolant line going out and let's say that that's all of the forces that are acting on that particular object. That's the, the basic gist of a free body diagram. Now it's perfectly acceptable as well to just represent this as a dot. So we could just have a dot and then include all the same forces acting on that dot and that would be a perfectly acceptable free body diagram. The issue in this case is that if we just have this single dot, it might be kind of challenging to include all of the forces on there. Um, so that's why I actually drew the object. And, and generally speaking, you do want to go ahead and draw at least the outline of the object you're doing. I'm not going to be concerned about your artistic abilities as much as I am concerned about the correct notation and direction of all the forces. A lot of times you'll also have distances too. So in this case, we could say like this is distance A, and you'd have another distance over here. We'll call that distance B. And there would be other information that you may have as well. But that's the, that's the general idea behind the free body diagram. The systems we're going to deal with right now are called coplanar. That means that all the forces share the same plane. If that is not true, then that type of system would be a three-dimensional system. And we will discuss three-dimensional systems. But for now, we're just going to stick to 2D systems as you sort of learn these concepts. In all static equilibrium systems, the sum of the forces equals zero. However, in coplanar static equilibrium systems, we can also add the sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero, and the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. So there's really two different equations we can have with that particular system. One of the forces you're going to draw in every diagram is going to be weight, or most every diagram, I should say. 
it's acceptable to do so in some cases to draw weight as just a single vector. There are cases when that's not acceptable and you'll sort of learn later on what to do in those cases.